Welcome back, everyone, of course, to the Prime at $2,000 4v4 variant for December 1st. We're hopping in here toward map number one on St. Marie Dumont between the Gosu crew and the EU cadets. Of course, newly formed gen is the EU cadets. We're looking forward to seeing how this squad does continue to dominate their way on the online scene. Now forcing their way into respawn, which is normally not their, uh, their cup of tea. Usually it's search and destroy game modes. Yeah, I just learned five minutes ago that uh, this is the United Young team, or yeah. of course, a brilliant pickup. You know, you always see Celium's or Celium's team win a lot of these game battle tournaments and actually stack up quite a few money, probably a lot more money than most amateur, even some lower tier pro teams. But nonetheless, we start here on Hill 1 in the middle of the map here in Restaurant, where the Ghost of Crew start with a hot lead. Indeed, they do, of course, trying to force their will. Juju finishing or starting off rather 4 and 0. Oh. Getting closer for that fighter pilot, spawning off turn up. And what I'm really glad to see, honestly, speaking of the opposite team, of course, the EU United Cadets, uh, of course, like I said, newly announced actually yesterday that they are on this team. And uh, now kind of trying to, of course, be scrim partners, along with trying to just train up the overall uh, younger scene, especially being one of the, honestly, probably the foremost talented underrated players uh, at the moment. But um, what I really like that this group is trying to play some some variant, trying to learn some more other game modes. And probably it kind of comes to the fact of the organization behind them, not just trying to force their way into doing variant, but kind of letting them say, hey, play some, play some, you know, variant modes. Try to play something else rather than search and destroy. Try to learn, because of course, they're going to kind of become not necessarily a permanent scrim partner with the regular United group, of course, Brasini, RC, Silly, and Clayster. But, you know, I think it's just overall a very smart thing to kind of see them trying to play something a little bit different and just try to become a very complete squad, because now they've got an organization behind them, of course, funding, stuff like that. Uh, just really glad to see this group kind of be rewarded for a lot of their hard work. Into hill number two, you can see Gosa crew are steamrolling right now. And look at the numbers that Juju is dropping right now. Seven and one, currently on a three streak. And after first and second hill, it's been all Gosu crew. You cadets only getting really 10 points on the first hill, just a few points here on the second. As we head into the third hill of parking lot, located all the way here at the top of the map where players are still looking to get organized. Only one player of each team. But you see the three stack coming here from EU Cadets towards the top side, but it's going to be Jetpacker cuts down two players of the Gosu crew, and this could be the chance where they take it back. Yeah, they could. Simp happens to force his way toward the back lines, but it looks like Illy is there for the trade, finds one, can't find the second, though. And this is where we're going to start to see TGC take a little bit more of an advantage when it comes down to this hill. Players rotating in through Radio Tower. We'll see if they can... Try to grab these last few seconds. Of course, all four players up. Clink shuts down one. And Pempe holding the back lines there with the FG42, making it look easy as they're going to hold at least contest. For the last 15 seconds, immediate shot there onto Simp's head as Pempe makes him pay. And for those who, of course, watched prior UMG tournaments, it is kind of a surprise to see a group like the EU Cadets be down the way that they are. But this is a game mode where they're not comfortable in. This is the game modes where it kind of comes down to overall slang ability, not just search and destroy knowledge. And this is a group who, obviously, like I said, needs to learn these game modes. They need to learn how the respawns work. So this isn't necessarily what their comfort pick is. And honestly, if you're the side of the Ghost crew, you got to be wary of that search and destroy for map two. That's a guaranteed one to happen because this group... It honestly thrives when it comes into search and destroy. They won the second annual uh, Memorial $10,000 tournament for a reason. This is a group that you do not want to be down against when it comes down to search and destroy. But still, looking on TGC, showing why they are the more dominant respawn team, at least so far, especially off the plays of both Juju and Pemby currently at 10 kills. This is the most amount of time that you cadets have gotten this entire map, and it's not that they don't have the kills on the board. Yes, they are maybe lacking a little bit in the kill department, but it's the hill players of Ghost Crew are so much more effective at staying alive in the hill, even when all their teammates are down and CEU cadets can get triple or team wipe the other team, but it's the hill player like Pemby who's able to stay alive just like that. Juju's able to win an important gunfight here against Celium to get that last bit of scrap time, but now we're back into the middle of the map here in Restaurant where Ghost Crew still almost, almost doubling the amount of points here of EU cadets, but look how many players are stacked here from EU cadets. They just need to spread around the hill, but Fastball and Juju are not letting any room for them to go outside of the hill. But this is where EU cadets might strive here in these close quarters engagements. Yeah, and I noticed you can kind of see a few moments here and there as the, the hill does go back and forth. A little bit of a scary moment for the set of EU uh, for the set of EU cadets. Of course, keeping in mind that rotation that will be coming in toward winery for, for hill number two. 
It looks like the side of you cadets kind of forcing a lot of control, kind of all four players inside of Bottom Restaurant. However, though, there was one gunfight that could have turned the entire tide and given rotations over toward the side of Gosu crew. And just little plays like that, had that one not equaled out to a feral position for them, had they dropped inside of the hill and lost that overall spawn control, that would have been honestly huge for the side of the Gosu crew to have. Of course, regaining these last few seconds, and it will be the side of you cadets who will currently hold control for winery but just a very close call one that nearly didn't go their way but keeping in mind though the streaks it does work out for them Illy now on a six spree and also does have looks like the fighter pot glide bomb as well as that mortar strike to work with definitely one that he could be using on future hills especially like this one Jen all the remaining hills at least toward these rotations are incredibly open in a single hill you cadets held the entire 60 seconds and make it only a 10 point game as streaks coming in for the side of you cadets to try and kill, just get these players from ghost of crew distance off this hill where even you cadets after that middle uh that middle hill they had left side control or left side spawns able to give them winery lot off the off the break and ghost of crew had one chance to break it and with streaks coming in they have not touched First and second hill, now going to third of parking lot, all the way to the top right of the map, goes to crew focusing on those rotations, where very important engagements are going in, that's going to be Juju winning that against Simp, where really deciding where goes to crew should make the comeback here. Definitely should, of course, like you said, rotation coming in, clink, lock it down some time, of course, with it, FG42, and as you were kind of talking there, Jin, I was actually going through the arsenal of the side of the EU cadets, of course, watching them quite a bit when it, come, when it comes down to the search and destroy games. Usually, it's actually both Simp and Illy who rock the SMGs for this team, and at least in the past, St. Marie Dumont has been known as an SMG kind of favorite map, most likely two ARs, two SMGs, however, not the case whatsoever. It seems they have kind of switched up their comp quite a bit, actually rocking the, seeing the two guys who are prone to the SMGs, both Simp and Illy, actually rocking FG42s for this map. So, kind of an interesting comp for them, kind of something that you're not used to seeing. And Salem, who's usually an AR guy, is the one who's actually rocking the PPSH. So, overall, three different weapon changes when it, came, when it comes down to this first respawn. Whether it's comfort or not, it seems to be working, as they've definitely kind of retaken back over this game here, Jen. Of course, back in toward Winery, actually even coming in from the first hill on this first set of, on the second set of rotations over in Bottom Restaurant. Just since then, they have just completely turned the tide around, have won the rotation battle, and Selium playing pretty strong here toward this current streak that, is on, that he's currently on. As it looks like he does have that glide bomb and that fighter pilot in his back pocket, and it is a fantastic position right now. If he can kind of hold this one just toward the side restaurant, it's going to make things super awkward for the side of the Ghost crew in one mode. They're going to have to reset constantly their overall push here in toward middle. Clinky Poo with a very important Ooh. two piece, but Selium with the three. Oh, and the complete team wipe for EU cadets. They should be able to hold this, but look, this is Gosu crew trying to push it one last time. Trades going back and forth, 25 seconds left into lookout post, but it's EU cadets looking to make a comeback. 200 points, they're about to hit as lookout post is a lookout post about to dwindle down, and we gotta look towards the middle map where you see players from both sides looking to control not only in the middle, but help their players in the hill and it's gonna be ghost of crew picking up the last couple seconds but look how many players are stacked here from eu cadets into middle map and this is the hill in the last rotation that made them get to come back they held the full 60 seconds here and it was illy here that went on his sixth streak and earned himself streaks to also take down winery lot after that so eu cadets could possibly win off of this hill good indeed looks like streaks starting to come down i like this play a lot trying to force those players into the fire that could have been coming here through bottom restaurant, but here come the pre-fire shots for Juju. This Nate as well does do some damage and coming down the stairs. Juju making this one his own, but ends up dropping. Now it's up to fastball and Penby to do some damage. Fastball prone to this position in the past, of course, for UMG tournaments, but ends up dropping there as it is less than 30 seconds needed for the set of EU cadets to lock this map number one and put it in the books versus a side like the Gosu crew who are prone and should be winning this hard point game. This is one that they really can't afford to lose, Jen, especially when it comes down to search and destroy. We know how incredibly talented the EU, are cadet, the EU cadets are when it comes down to that particular game mode. They've got to lock down this time, and they also have to make sure this rotation isn't lost. And it seems that it is going to be the case. It looks like over toward Winery, as the fighter pilot will come in here, most likely from Illy. Actually, no. Who's got the fighter pilot? It's actually Selium who's calling in a lot of these streaks. They've got to get a push here fast and soon, but a fastball and Clink responding for three, but Selium's here toward the back lines. How will this rotation go? Simp trying to make somewhat of an impact. The streaks are still in their back pocket. Do they use these or not is the question, but they've got to get these players out of these bottom control buildings, but Juju finds two. Illy's able to find one with the streaks. A lot going down, but it is currently the side of the Gosu crew 
who are locking down some crucial seconds here, Jen. EU cadets had the preferable spawns for this hill and fastball and clinky poo coming in with three or four three or four kills able to flip the, the spawns in their favor. Now they're able to flood into this hill. Very important two piece there by Juju as well. Still one player of EU cadets trying to hold this time and he wins that fight against Fastball. Wow. Now winning him that last seven seconds of scrap Perfect time, but situation. it's not going to be enough. More streaks coming in as now we still have to rotate over into that next one of parking lot in the top right side of the map. And let's take a look who's there. Celium opens up with two and it's going to be EU cadets oh. that have the initial touch, but the streaks come in from Juju and it's still alive. It is indeed. Streaks being used back and forth, but here comes some from Simp. Another fighter pilot. Can he find anyone? Is the question actually backing out of the hill? Illy finds two with the glide bomb at the exact same time. They just need two more seconds. Can they hop inside the hill? Yes, they will do it. And as the streak battle will end us out, the scoreline will follow suit. 250 to 202 as the EU cadets overall, as far as this map did play out make a decent comeback and are now looking to be in prime fashion when it comes in a search and destroy. Of course, this is not their preferred game mode, but they win it regardless. And now London Docks, which is going to be loading up for map number two. If we're this side of the Ghost Crew in this situation, Jen, you've got to be honestly a little bit nervous, but at the same time, you've got to be kind of angry at the same time just because of the fact that you had the game in your possession. You were playing pretty well, and, and honestly, the Cadets were kind of on the, the back end. But now looking on to search and destroy, I'm really not sure what to think when it comes down to the Ghost Crew side. I'm not sure either is. Gosu Crew started with the 80 point advantage on yeah. the first rotation of Hills. EU Cadets brought it back on the second rotation, holding rest pretty much the whole 60 on restaurant and let's say three quarters of winery lot able to earn themselves streaks to rain down on either trying to control rhino winery or when they moved into parking lot it was more of a struggle for gosu crew to get time and they're only getting tidbits of hills here and there not enough to actually turn the lead in their favor and you know still a pretty close scoreline of 250 to 202 as we head into the snd we do know that Selium and friends are very capable in SND. We'll have to see if this is the same for the other side. Yeah, indeed we will. So, uh, of course, Search and Strong London Docks will be map number two. Of course, a lot of crucial moments toward the end of map number one. Welcome yeah. back, ladies and gentlemen, of course, to the Prime at $2,000.44 variant for December 1st. It's myself here, live from the UMG studio, Lando, joined alongside by Jen, a.k.a. Lemon Kiwi. Jen, we're hopping here toward map number two between the EU cadets and the Gosu crew. It was the side of the EU cadets who was able to narrowly win map number one there on St. Marie du Mans, 250 to 202. Of course, making an uh, excellent comeback. I was just trying to distract you by uh, my little accent there. Of course, I, I believe you can say that actually correctly. I, I can't say uh, St. Marie du Mans the, uh, the best way possible. But regardless, EU cadets making a big comeback and now in their preferred game mode of Search and Destroy. Very curious to see is Simp making it look easy versus uh, Clinky Poo there as he's able to drop him. Definitely the preferred game mode. This is where the side of the EU Cadets feels most comfortable and one where the side of the Ghost Crew really has to kind of iron out all their issues. Can't really afford to have any mistakes. Left in a one versus one. It was actually the Ghost Crew in the advantage where Fastball drew for his blood. Juju also with the second, but trades <laughs> ending everything up in a one versus one of Simp versus Pemby the Go where... Simp not opting to actually go for the plan here at Cabin, although he did have full know. control of it. And actually, probably Pemby is waiting for him to make the first dance. Pemby also with the AR is just waiting for the bomb to go down. With 18 seconds left, it's going to be Simp that's forced to make the first move. And a one versus oh, one out around the corner, wow. and <laughs> it is EU Cadets that draw first blood. And Simp knew exactly where Pemby was at, like through this entire position. Of course, he kind of holds that ankle toward the side of the boxes and just waits for a good, what, 15 to 20 seconds. And obviously realizes that he has to hop on the bomb plant, does so, and then immediately goes back to this position waiting for Pemby to kind of move his way forward. So props to Simp as he obviously finishes off with the most important kill, the one at the end, but finds two prior to solidify a hat trick there in round number one, continuing on here as he tossing out that Frag, that one could be good, and does. Lands with one onto Clink. Perfect nade placement, along with the timing. Maybe finding one onto Fastball just toward the right side as well. Simp doing it all along with, not even realizing it, but silencing that early bomb rush toward B. He does it all by himself, and immediately, like I said, finding that first blow with a nade does well to silence it. But at the same time, turn up and sell him. His teammates are falling, but Illy could be finding one here through this mid-cut. Could be great timing, or could be the worst one possible. As Simp finds one... 
Illy finds the second. And just like that, it will be yet again another round as Simp is currently sitting at 5-0. and oh. Yeah, two consecutive rounds, and it was defense clearly in, in the advantage, looking at their positioning, trapping here. EU cadets in the middle map, where they could come through statue, come from their own spawn, not giving them any room to go for any objective. And of course, having the numbers in their favor is just a matter of time before they eliminate the two remaining players. Two consecutive rounds, like I said, for EU. They're looking hot here. And now, on the offense, they will be as they head, most likely here through water. And Simp looking for an important engagement here against Fastballa, where he's able to escape. I, I just love watching a guy like Fastball, man. It's just... It's just a different type of gameplay. This guy likes to rush things. He likes to kind of do un unorthodox strategies. And uh, one thing that his roster was known for doing, of course, Panda, as well as prior to that, even Vex Gaming, uh, back in the Black Ops 3 days and even prior to that one, uh, his team known for kind of making interesting strategies happen. Even teams would kind of blacklist them because of the strategies that they would not use or wouldn't agree to do certain things. Just kind of play with all rules. Uh, turn up, trying to do some work with a sniper rifle in a one versus three. But... Just really a big fan of Fastball's play overall throughout the years and kind of being on that Panda Gaming roster. Actually, funny enough, with Pimpy, who's uh, also on the Ghost Crew as well. Uh, Fastball, recent addition toward this uh, Ghost Crew team. Actually, in place of Human Jesus for the player that we obviously witnessed in uh, the last series for the side of Yo, What Up? Uh, winner of the series, I believe, could actually face off against that group, which would be kind of an interesting thing if we see the Ghost Crew make it that far. Uh, but still looking on, though. Definitely a, a big fan of the pickup here in Fastball, but a guy who's definitely known for some interesting strategies and, and one who can definitely uh, make some things happen as he's used to team pushes, four-man rushes to certain sites. Definitely got to be watching out for, but he's definitely facing off against a very talented squad in the EU Cadets at Search and Destroy. But uh, currently down around. We'll see how they do on the offense as Ilian Co. Working on the defense as the streaks will come in. And it looks like Simp able to shut down Pimby. Clink. One versus two as he shuts down one there on a turn up. Well, this is not looking good for Ghost Crew. Obviously, around in favor of EU cadets. Unless Clinky Poo can clutch something up, but this is exactly what happened in, in the last round where Ghost Crew got first blood and Fastball are going down, Juju going for trades. And this is where they won their round, and Clinky Poo now knows he cannot go to A because there's somebody there waiting for him. And now there's somebody, Simp here over at Statue, also taking a look at him. So does he either rotate, go for a safe route? and go to middle map, or does he try to win one of these engagements, but in either situation, Sim can now <laughs> rotate towards the middle map, or to the middle road, and prevent this bomb plant over at B, so Clinky Poo in just an absolute impossible position, as there it is, EU United, or sorry, EU Cadets, <laughs> take a third round. And that was a, you know, a decent play there from Clink, of course, he was just really doing his absolute best to try to bait either Illy or to Simp into rushing into his uh, you know, kind of prone to ADS, but uh, unfortunately it doesn't work out. Ilian Simp playing very passively, of course, realizing they are in the driver's seat when it comes down to that man advantage. But still looking on. Three rounds to one right now for the side of EU Cadet. Six and one overall right now for Simp. Of course, calls in the streaks to shut down one in the prior round and still does have that fighter pilot. We'll see if that one does come into play as they're currently locking things down inside of Barrel Building. And Fastball, doing exactly like I said, what this guy could do. Of course, finding his first kill of the round and uh, versus Selium, actually. Very surprising to see. We're, we're, at least from what I've been able to notice, usually on this map, we're going to see Illy constantly be in early fights when it comes down to being inside Warehouse. And maybe it's just overall awareness of Fastball's also aggression, or what really is the case. But uh, Fastball will equal up with the final kill there. As it looks like in the hard point, as well as in the search and destroy, uh, just some interesting plays that we're seeing from EU cadets. Like I said, pulling at different strategies, and nothing that's not working for them, but just used to kind of seeing Illy with that up, up kind of in your face SMG style play. And it looks like Fastball's not really having the worthy opponent as he uh, would normally probably see. Yeah, Fastball loves to push up that bottom water and stay into um, bottom cabin and wait for them to push in. That's a lot of the times how he's gotten first blood or gotten himself first blooded, which either kind of costs his team. But we've seen Ghost Hooker actually win also when they've been first blooded. But you can see here getting the quick plant over at the B-bomb side with all the numbers in their favor. Now just needing to have someone control the statue side would be preferable, but they'll have to face against Celium. Celium as Fastball are pushing towards right side of the map wow. has to meet Simp the Gem Packer and actually doesn't win that gunfight. Trade's going in, but it's going to be Ghost Crew in the number advantage with the bomb planted. Indeed, how does the retake get made forward? Simp with immediate reaction, only tags on shots there toward Clink. 
There's 18 seconds left. TGC just kind of has to hold the back line. They don't have to rush anything, but finding two immediately, and Juju realizes I'm actually in a pretty awkward spot. He needs to try and stay alive and does not need to contest this fight. And no, he isn't spotted. The last few seconds starting to tick down and ticks off one. The one that's necessary, the one that's needed. And Simp can only look on finding the pistol kill onto Juju. As his teammate will fall, trying to grab the defuse. And what seemed like a guaranteed round for the Gosu crew started to get a little bit scary. Of course, props to Juju for kind of proning inside of middle map, staying alive. And uh, obviously equaling things out. But one that was definitely a little bit too close for comfort if you're on the side of TGC there, Jin. That really came down to the wire. They had the number advantage, the bomb planted within the first 30 seconds of the map with all four players alive. It shouldn't have really came down to that, but as usual, Fastball is waiting over at the A site, Pen B, giving some cover on Statue. But you can see you cadets trying to go for that plan. They're going to face off Ooh. against Fastball in a 1v2. It actually comes up from behind Ilya. At least Selium is there for the trade, three versus three. Selium is now free for the bomb plant at the A site. Turn up easy. Also giving him some support and cover on the long range parts of water, but it's going to be Simp that gets pinched out towards the top side of Statue with Juju and his friends playing very close together. They are, of course, kind of trapped when it comes in a warehouse. If you're the side of the Ghost Crew, you're going to have a little bit of an idea as to where these players could be at. And Pemby is supplying a lot of that information. Toward the beginning of this round, we saw that exact fight that I was looking forward to seeing Illy versus Fastball with that up close PPSH play. As it was a Troy that kind of equaled things out, and I believe it was Clink who kind of found one of the middle round kills, which kind of equals things out to a uh, bigger man advantage. As Pemby does wait, the patience pays off. And it's now Selium la left, last alive. Every single angle is watched, and no kills will be earned, as it will be a fourth round secured here for the side of the Gosu crew. A fantastic kind of retake onto the site, Pemby. Of course, watching toward that back box's area. And it's honestly kind of came through these last few rounds here, Jen. It's really kind of come through the mid-round kills. Kind of that third, fourth kill that have either been going either Clink or Juju's way. Kind of picking off someone on an off angle. And just good overall positioning from the Ghost of Crew to kind of leave themselves a man advantage. One that obviously works out in round number six very well. Of course, kind of being Juju last alive. And then in that last round, of course, kind of picking off players as time went on in the round. And... Obviously, the numbers working out for them early, and that's the reason why they have the lead that they have right now. And Gosu Crew, that's three unanswered rounds for them, where they're looking to try and take this away. Still a one-round differential between Oof, these two teams, up. but ooh, Clinky getting the first blood there on turn up too easy as Juju goes down as well, going towards this A cabin's site, looking for the plant, but Illy is keeping in a close eye and actually... He's looking for the pick there on fastball. I was able to dive out of that situation. But you can see here, Ghost Crew have the numbers. Illy needs some teammates to help him out, but they're trying to focus on this, this statue Jeez. control. And Sim getting a very important pick onto fastball it solidifies that. So if Ghost Crew don't get that plan here on A, they're going to tr get trapped here from all angles. And that's going to be a loss. Ooh, and Simp having to fire some shots on the Clink. Clink just trying to regen some health. Goes for the rush, and I, did Simp actually spot him? Okay, sure. Okay, that was just the worst time possible for Simp. Had he not maybe peeked at the right point of view, he wouldn't have been able to spot the uh, dolphin dive there from Clink. But still holding each other's positions as Simp might just get fantastic timing. But Clink is not on the bomb yet. Clink has his goal from the plant, and who will win this one, Simp? Great reaction time as things will now be evened out at 4-4. Four to four. That's a huge round. The side of EU cadets are able to get on the board there because this easily could have been five to three. But now after eight rounds, we're level at four. And Simp, unlike what his emblem says, average at best, not at all the case. The man is currently, <laughs> what, 12 and three, leading the way quadruple positive. And has also done some work when it comes down to that objective. Plants diffuses, calls himself the jetpacker, but he's definitely not playing like one. Very, very solid player in this search and destroy game here, Jen, is... Looks like Fastball might be going for the fake rush. And when I say fake, maybe just a little bit of a bait as a very slow play here. You see all four players stacked up, and this is them searching for that first blood. I've, I've, honestly, what I think they're coming in from the side of uh, EU cadets is that they know that Fastball is there for the rush, and they do a fantastic job of kind of just waiting together and kind of playing as a group and knowing that they're going to find that at least they're going to find a trade in that situation. Yeah, I think some streaks coming in from EU Kinets at least opens the map up for them to be able to move towards the A site. And now Illy trying to even up those numbers. Of course, Fastball 
going down very early in the round. Of course, like I said before, trying to go for that first blood, either gets it or he gets oh, first blooded. No! And that's exactly what happened. But Juju trying to get oh, the trades. No. He did trade Fastball for him earlier, oh, but now goes no. down, leaving Clink all by himself. And Simp, Simp comes from behind. And what is he at? 14 and 3. Juju. As you cadets now take the advantage. <sighs> oh, Juju. No. That hurt to see. I don't know if you saw that, Jen. Uh, Juju may have or may have not have whiffed some shots there in that last round. Uh, <laughs> Definitely should have picked off Simp. Don't call him out. <laughs> I'm not trying to, but at the same time, it's uh, just a rather unfortunate situation. But still looking on, man to look out for, is this man Simp, like you just said there, Jen. 14 and 3. Incredibly close to streaks. Honestly, as long as he can maybe find a few... His team should be guaranteed to win the next round, but it looks like this <laughs> this round is almost already done with. Juju saying, guys, where'd you all just go? What just happened? Illy, I just spotted him. I just spotted another player on the stairs. And this is just great trigger discipline, but no! Okay, thought he was going to mess up that shot again. Was a little bit worried, but now one versus three. Bomb not in his possession, and Illy will hold the box correctly. Hold the line sight as this one gets done in round number 10. Close games here in both of these maps, but back to back. Going toward the side of EU cadets and gotta say was obviously pretty impressed from the side of the Gosu crew. This one kind of ends out in a scoreline that I wasn't surprised about. But something that I really liked in one of the prior rounds, I believe it was either round number nine or round number eight, I believe it was round number nine, was a very solid kind of change of their overall play style from the set of EU cadets. What they end up doing in one of those rounds is they kind of like group up all together and kind of in back barrel building. And you notice that all four of them were together. I think one of them was inside a barrel building, but all three of them were kind of on that stairs, kind of watching for that first peak, but overall just staying together. And I believe the reason why they do that is I'm pretty sure they were kind of calling out in prior rounds, hey, fastball is most likely going for a rush. Fastball is looking for the first blood. He's rushing into, fair, or into barrel building. He's rushing into fire. And I think being aware of that, they're obviously realizing that, hey, we're on the offense for this current round. Let's try to make this first pick at least find a trade i think juju or clink might have been rushing through um i think that was a coal room who ends up getting a trade on that overall position but that was easily in every other part of that round was most likely going to be a four versus three on their offense so just kind of playing toward the opposition playing very strong and kind of countering what they're doing mid-game just very good overall solid play from a group of younger guys who, like i said are just one of, the, one of the best teams as far as search and destroy is considered in World War II in the EU cadets. Very smart play from them and just very impressive, uh, you know, respawn play as well. Making a big comeback in that hard point, Jen. I know we were kind of surprised to see that, especially because of the side of the Ghost Crew had such a massive lead throughout most of that match.